What's up guys? Welcome back to Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and today we're poke poling. Mountain Half Moon Bay right now, North Jetty, and we're gonna go look for some monkey face eel. And if I can do that, I'm going to make some sushi with a monkey face. Kind of like unagi style. Alright, let's do this. Let's hope we can get some nice eel. Alright, let's go. Four. Let's try this hole first. Seems quite promising because it's pretty deep. Look at that, keeps going. There is no wind. I usually just leave it for about a minute or two. If no bites, then just move on. Oh, oh, I got a bite. Could be just something small, maybe a crab even. Oh, it was a crab. It was a crab. Let me go in here a little bit. Oh, look at this. All right. This is definitely untouched area. Only exposed during low tide. What's up, little rock crab? What's up? You came out to say hi? You came out to say hi? <laughs> Hello, female. Up her back. Yeah. Oh, I got a fish. Got a fish. Got a fish. Got one. Got a eel, baby. Nice. Yeah. First monkey face. That was about 10 minutes of poke pulling. Got one. Yeah, this is like a, this is a, actually a good size, perfect size for what I'm going to do. So this is my setup today. I just got an old rod that I used to use. Took all the eyes out. Um, even the rod tip is broken. Attached the coat hanger at the tip and just the snap swivel and the hook. That's it. Yeah, so I caught him right here. He was under, yeah, I just went under the rock. So they're mostly under the rocks. Yeah, they're under rocks. Oh. I got another one. Oh, already? I got another one. I got another one. This one's pretty cool looking. Oh, this one, look at the pattern on this one. Like a little, like a rockfish pattern. Nice, about the same size as the last one. And you'll feel like a little, little tug. Oh dang, I think I do, I got another one. I think I have another, I got another one. <laughs> oh no, I just lost it. Oh, he bit was the hook off. One? Yeah, there was another one. He bit the hook off. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, go in there, catch him. Look, try in that spot where I just did. If you catch one in one spot, you always try it again, because they might be in there. Go all the way in, and then stick it under the rock. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. Nice! <laughs> Look at, I just told the, the kid to try that hole that I caught too. There was a third one in there, definitely, I knew. So I told him to do it. Go in there, and he got one. Nice. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> yeah, no worries. There's gonna be one here. I can kind of feel that there will be one here. A lot of times, like, you see a hole and you kind of know if they're gonna be there. Just by the way the hole is kind of structured. And I think, oh, I got one. Got one, got one, got one. Oh! There it is. Yeah. See, called it. See, you kind of know just by the structure of that rock and how big the hole is. Just kind of get a feel for it, and uh, you can tell if you're gonna if there's gonna be one there or not. Pretty easy. All right, I'm gonna go put this in the bucket. All right. So I have this monkey face prickleback that I I just poked pole for yesterday, and. What we're gonna do is gonna fillet it up and we're gonna grill it like unagi, unagi style. 
So if you go to any sushi restaurants, you're probably familiar with unagi. Um, it's freshwater eel. And so yeah, we're gonna make it something like that. All right, we're gonna make the sauce from scratch as well. So let's do this. So first, actually, let me tell you, I, ha I just built this little cutting board with um, some two by fours and another two by four that I just nailed in there. So it'll just kind of stay on the edge. So let me show you how to flay this guy, okay? I've already dispatched the eels yesterday. I have this nail. So right behind the fin there, I'm going into the meat and I'm gonna take my knife. I'm actually holding the knife and holding the eel at the same time. Just like that. And I'm gonna go again. And with this guy, generally if I'm filleting unagi or anago, I'll go straight through the rib cage. But since these monkey face prickleback have really stinky abdomens, I'm just gonna go over the rib cage, try not to break through, because or else it's gonna be really messy and stinky. All right, so let's do this. behind the head go through the spine and I'm gonna go right under the spine and run my knife down along the spine and just cut that off boom and I'm not gonna just not gonna discard this we're gonna use this actually so I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit we're gonna save that for later I'm gonna make a little cut on the fin and I'm gonna hold the fin with the towel. And I'm just well, oh, just like that. And the fin comes off. Another fin on the bottom side here. I'm pulling and running my knife down at the same time. Boom, that's it. <clears throat> Alright guys, I'm gonna show you again. So from from the start. Nail that in. Make that incision. And I'm just gonna go over the rib cage here a bit. And here I kind of change my angle. I'm here at first, and then I'm gonna change the angle when I get on the other side of the spine. See that? That's it there. And I'm just gonna try to carefully remove this portion. All right. As long as you don't break it open, it doesn't smell. Boom, through the spine. Now I'm gonna take off and that's it now I'm just gonna cut that off and boom we got a perfect piece there so now I'm just gonna pour the hot water right on top of the eel and you see that kind of white white layer that's the slime now I'm just gonna rub my knife down and it'll come right off All right, now I have these skewers. I could only find the wooden ones, but if you have metal skewers, that would be much better. Now all I'm gonna do is run the skewer from one side. I'm actually gonna go in, I'm gonna put two on here. So one there, one in the middle. through like that Boom, just like that all right guys so here it is this is what it looks like so I got the skewer in 
That's two of the eels. So let me show you how to make the sauce. I have soy sauce here. This is light soy sauce. This is, um, it's called mirin. Uh, it's a uh, sweet cooking wine. And a little bit of brown sugar. So I'm going one part, one part mirin. Two parts, two parts soy sauce. Sauce, and I'm gonna go two spoons of brown sugar. Bring it up to a simmer, and we will add the bones. All right, so that's hot enough. I'm gonna add the bones in. I got the fin here. That's gonna just incorporate that eel flavor into the sauce. I'm gonna keep it about a simmer because uh, if you bring it up to a boil, it'll burn and it'll get bitter. So keep the lid off of it. We're gonna reduce 40% of the liquid and it's gonna be a nice thick sauce. So this knife is called a Deba. Um, that's not the brand, but that's the type of knife. And if you are interested in buying one of these, I'll post the link in the description below. Um, not to this exact knife because you can't buy this online, but I'll post something similar. Uh, no sponsors or anything, just uh, if you guys are interested, I will post one in the description. Alright, the sauce is looking good. I think it's about done. So one way you can check if it's done, take a spoon and it should kind of coat the spoon nicely. Yeah, that's pretty good. And it looks kind of runny right now, but once it cools down, it's going to thicken up. We're going to get the eel on the grill. Let's do this. Yep, now we're going to go skin side down first. Let's brush this on there. I'm just gonna go one minute on the skin side and I'm gonna turn it right over. All right, we're gonna turn it over. There we go. Now we're gonna brush the sauce right on there too. Turning it over again. Let that skin cook a little more. And I'm gonna brush this in too. Brush that sauce in more. Look at that, it looks beautiful. We're gonna move to the cutting board. Take that out carefully. How's it look? Mm -hmm. All right, now we're gonna make some sushi. Take one piece, take a piece of the eel, seaweed, and bam. Put that right there. Let's do a couple hand rolls too. Rice, right there. Put one there, here. Here it is, the catch 
and sushi eel is complete as I look. Ooh. Ooh, looks really nice. I think it looks pretty good. Came out pretty well. Yeah, just as I imagined. Nice. Cheers. Come by. Come by. Mm. I'm gonna just start with one piece first and then go to a hand roll. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Damn. <laughs> That's good. Ooh. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Crazy bug. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Mm. Yeah, the skin really adds a nice texture to it too. It's not just fish, you know, you get a nice uh, kind of a bite to it. It's um, not chewy, but has a little bit of a chew. Yeah. It's not like chewy, chewy. Yeah. How does it compare to the freshwater eel? Um, the flavor is much different actually. Freshwater eel, I feel like the flavor you get is mostly just sauce. Mm -hmm. It's just that flavor, that sauce flavor, right? The unagi sauce. But this one, you can actually taste the fish. Yeah, it's salty. Mm -hmm. It's got a little char on it. So you get that little bit of that barbecue charred flavor. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Saltwater eel in sushi, we call it anago, um, which is different from this. It's an actual eel. Um, this is not actually technically eel. But no, this is this is great. It's really good. I like it a lot. You like it? Mm -hmm. Jocelyn likes raw fish, but not really cooked fish. <laughs> so this says, she says this is pretty good. Really good for cooked fish. Yeah. So, there are a few bones that are like a little bit thicker, mm -hmm. but most of it, you can eat it. I like it in hand roll more. Yeah, uh huh? More even rice to eel ratio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe. See you See next, next time. time. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Oh, that was a good one. Hi.